Hi folks, uh, most of you know me. Uh, my name is Phil Burton. In 74, I got a job working for Barrel Builders. Um, Barrel Builders was started two years earlier. It started by a couple of Mondavi employees. But Mond Robert Mondavi was one of the first to bring in cooperage from France and to elevate the wine quality or, or change the wine quality. And um, those days, barrels were not broken down in shooks and, and shipped here in pieces. So they sent a coupe over from France oh, to train a really couple of Mondavi. <coughs> Shook. <laughs> anyway, so Mondavi, incidentally, I'm, I have a gadfly here. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard Clark speak, and no, he's one of the geniuses of the wine industry. Don't, don't, you don't have to. No, no, no. Um, but anyway, it's true. I don't need Clark Smith, his books, his other stuff. Anyway, um, but so um, I ended up working for Barrel Builders in 74, been there ever since. Um, five of us employees bought the company from the old owners in 86. Mm -hmm. I bought out my last partner in 1990. So I've been doing this for a while. Okay, I have no, uh, I don't know everything about this, but um, I've been working with wood for a long time and working with barrels for a long time. And I've seen over the years the development of stuff, um, especially barrel maintenance and sanitation. Mm -hmm. With care, a barrel can last for decades. Okay, one of your biggest problems here in these small wineries is barrel sanitation and maintenance. Yeah. Here, here. If you could, and, and there's no hard and fast rule here, if you could keep your cellar at 55 degrees all the time, you could empty a barrel and leave it for a week, and it would still be fine. If your barrel, if your cellar is 70 degrees, two days later, three days later, I'm sorry, you've got a population. Um, so then it it's talks about most of you don't have that wherewithal to put in those big conditioning systems and stuff until you start selling 20,000 cases or something. So what you got to do is take better care of your cooperage. You know, even used barrels are 150, 250 bucks. New French, even with a devalued euro, still are running 800 plus. I mean, this is a huge amount of money. What I tell people is when they're starting wineries, and I'm sure I've told a couple of you, do not buy new barrels for your first couple of years. Wreck a couple of cheap barrels, mess with a couple of cheap barrels and stuff like that, because you will lose some. Barrel builders, barrel builders, besides selling new barrels and stuff, which is our, way our main part of the business, we sell and broker several thousand used barrels a year. We even bring in barrels from Europe when we get behind here and stuff like that. And what we do, for instance, is we only buy from reputable people. We buy from the same eight or ten wineries every year. We would not buy a winery, buy a, buy a used barrel from somebody, because what do you get with a used barrel? Why are they getting rid of it? Yeah. Is it just because it's neutral and they do a third, 33% changeover every year? Or is it because that lot of barrels, somebody forgot to sulfur and they went VA a little bit? Or, boy, that bread population was out of control. Okay, so when you buy used barrels, you take a risk, but you save a lot of money, as with a used car or anything else. Okay, so now, say, when you get have barrels that are working for you, and you empty them, okay, you've got to be real active on them quickly. Okay, there's a bunch of things to do, uh, a bunch of ways to proceed this. There's parasitic acid which people sell, and I don't have much experience with it, because one of the byproducts of it is acetic acid. It just we're, Clark, you could speak to that more than I, because I've never used it. Um, Oxygen-based sanitizers, ProxyClean and stuff like that. Obviously, nobody would let chlorine anywhere near um, anything made of wood, lignans in it, whether it's corks or barrels, for the obvious, obvious reasons of TCA development. Um, then there's some other stuff, mechanical ways to do it. One is ozone generators. Ozone. You, you smell ozone when you walk into a winery or smell it if they're using it, is it, it, it enough of it to be, you know, get it in space. Five minutes later, you can't smell it anymore. It's still there. And there will be some serious long-term health consequences, but that's one of the options. But it's not without its, its risks. Um, the other ones are, you know, using chemicals. I sell ProxyClean. I love it. It's an oxygen-based bleach. Once again, um, it works in the barrel, but it's got limited resources because, you know, you all know that barrels are so porous 
not only is the wood porous, but the joints and the gaps and the inevitable little blisters that form in barrels. When you first fill a barrel with that, they fill, they never empty. So what you are left with is, you know, besides the ozone, besides the, the liquid things, some people use soda ash to clean barrels, fine. It works on dissolving tartrates and stuff like that. It's really hard on a barrel um, and do that. So what we've come up with and what you have said and other people have said too, realistically, what you do with all these things like ozone and stuff like that, you put them in a barrel and do that, it kills whatever it touches on the top half a millimeter right. of what's going on. The only real way, I think, to do that now, and do that, and I think it's pretty well recognized now, is with hot water or steam, okay? With you guys, with your barrels, okay, when you empty them with wine, the immediate steps, drain, rinse, sulfur. Some people burn sticks in them or burn discs. Some people say that they want to do that because it uses up the available oxygen in a barrel and makes an anaerobic environment. You need to burn about three or four full sticks before it goes out. Plus, This is another thing that's come out. There's no such thing as a dripless sulfur wick or sulfur disc. You have to have a container like a to catch it. Handle. And even, even, even then they spatter a little bit, but you, you would think elemental sulfur would be benign. It's not. It can, it can contribute to sulfide formation. Um, and we've seen that too many times. Um, so if you're going to think about, think about doing your barrels, cleaning your barrels and do that, so you drain them, rinse them, sulfur them with a thing like that, and then take care of them. If you have a real cold cellar and your humidity is 80%, they'll be good for a couple of months. None of you have that. So um, what you need to do is check, what I tell, put it on a calendar. Every, every beginning of every month, when you give the dog his heartworm pill or whatever something you do on a regular basis, check the barrels. If they get sound tight to the, the, the knock test, and they, you, you just look at them, they look tight, you pull, you pull a bung and you can sort of smell the sulfur still there and nothing else, they're fine. If you start to not smell much sulfur or you smell something coming over it, particularly VA or aldehydic little notes or something, you know, that, that chemically smell, there's no easy way out of it. Rinse them and sulfur them again. Okay, in our experience for the thousands of, several thousand used barrels a year we do, in the, in the barrels I see in wineries, one of your biggest problems is barrels going off in between uses. Um, yeah, that's right. And do that. Or, sure. or, or when you have your barrel full and you forget to top it, and it usually gets down to the point right. where you end up with a big, big head happens. space. Right. Ever. Yes. That's right. That's right. But what I want to talk about now, just a little bit, is is keeping your barrels from going off right now. Can okay. you empty your barrel of wine, rinse it, and sulfur it? If you use a disc, a five gram disc is plenty. You don't need the big ones. You can use, if you buy the thick sulfur sticks, the fat ones, a third of a stick is fine. If you buy those little papery ones, use a whole stick. Make sure to put something in it because the splatters and the elemental sulfur will contribute to sulfide formation. Yeah. Yeah. Check it every month and see what's going on. Okay, now, if your cellar conditions are even worse than that, where you can't control the humidity at all, you might want to store your barrels full. It's a pain, and any, any intervention you do with a barrel is gonna take some of the oak out, okay? But, but the alternative is to lose the whole barrel. So, I mean, what's the thing? So, if you can't keep, your, say if your humidity is less than about 65% or 60%. Always the best thing is to refill with wine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Keep your barrels full of wine all the time is the easy answer. Mm -hmm. Toughy sometimes in a small winery environment. The other one is to fill it with water. I meant to bring down some tables on usage. But what you want to do is put metal bisulfide in it. Potassium metal bisulfide to keep sodium ions down is probably the best way to shoot it. But it, 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 it releases very little SO2 at, at neutral pH of seven. Right. You need to acidify that water, do that. By doing that, do that. But even then, you can't ignore your barrel. You have to check it every month or so and right. check that eulage, you know, that there is that transpiration, that slow evaporation. So you, you need to check it and top up your yeah. <laughs> Or it could be a 
You I, I, never, I never thought of that before. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. good. That's Sorry. Good. So anyway, the <laughs> basic <laughs> ways to keep your brows are just the old brown shoe, you know, old school ways to do it. Take care of your brows now. Don't forget them and monitor them often. There's no, there's no way around that. Okay. And as far as interventions and cleaning and stuff like chemicals, chemicals work sometimes part way. Realistically now that the status whether it's whether it's Clark and Venovation or it's ETS and what they've worked with, they incidentally yeah. Enological Testing Services, Gordon and, and his crew have also come up with some great stuff. And you should probably be aware of what they're doing now and stuff in, in barrel sanitation and stuff. But hot water steam is really the way to go. Um, steam Nice steam generation is nice. Dry steam is nice, but these steam generators cost seven, eight, ten thousand dollars, whatever. I think um, Vic got a deal on the one he bought. We recently bought, and believe me, we try all the new technology that you comes guys out. provide it as a service. We can. We do. We do occasionally, but we don't advertise it. Mm. We bought a hot water generator. It happens to be propane, or, or I guess ours is diesel this time. Um, and well, do that so we can only run it outside. Uh, Where's this diesel? We bought it in Santa Rosa. What's, what's the um, anyway? But it cost us it cost us four thousand dollars. Yeah, it works perfectly. So what you can do is, I mean, realistically, they talk about getting rid of all the solids, all the residues in the barrels and stuff, so the sanitizer will work. I believe that if it's not a problem really, and you don't have buildup of tartrates and big amounts of it. What we do is we have a barrel here. We stick the no we don't have the rotating nozzle or anything like that. We do have them, but we don't use. Them. We stick the nozzle, the regular straight nozzle of the gunner, and let it run for eight or ten minutes, um, to the point where the outside you can feel the heat starting to come through the outside of the barrel. And I would guarantee this is running about 210, which is high setting, and I know it's that because. The metal wand on it, if water drips on it, it boils mm -hmm. off right away. So you're talking right about steam level. And it runs there, and we have had we have almost zero problems with um, Acetobacter is the big one that we play with. Um, and that seems to work the best for us. So besides the chemicals you can use and all that, and don't, you know, the rest of the stuff, I'm not sure you need it, even though we, we bought it all. If you buy a, a hot water generator that'll do that, a mid-range generator that'll cost about four thousand dollars, it'll clean your floors. You get a pressure washer out of the and a pressure washer. Yeah. And, and, and it's a pressure Same washer thing. to boot. But if you're going to spend the money, buy something that generates hot water. I mean, that that's the bottom line here. And, I, and of course, it takes a little bit of the oak flavors out, a little bit of the stuff out there. But in, and in the meantime, it's stuff like that. You know, then you know the barrel is fully soaked. Fully tight, fully is not sterile, but is as clean as you can possibly get it. 